What is up guys, Winner Kills here, and welcome to a brand new and updated DDD deck profile. This is following suit that test hand video I made a few days ago, maybe last week. Um, and I'm actually not going to be doing a test hand sequence at the end of this. If you want to see some test hands, feel free to check out that test hand video uh, up there in the top right. Um, so yeah, feel free to check that out if you want to see some in-depth, uh, dedicated test hands for this deck. And of course, this is a Master Rule 5 format deck profile, um, because I really just see no point, me personally, in trying to put effort and time and playtesting into this deck for this current format. I'd much rather spend more time focusing on this deck in the future, because it becomes much more enjoyable to play, and uh, will hopefully be getting, and is getting, some good support for this deck, uh, especially in the extra deck. And of course, this is post banless, so... I'm actually still playing one copy of Into the Void in here because essentially the way I look at it, it is an upstart goblin uh, at this point, and I want to at least try to get my money's worth out of uh, some of them at least, uh, even though I'd bought a little playset right before the ban list came out, but again, I digress. Uh, but yeah, so this is a MR5 um, post uh, dual overload, if you will, uh, video, um, so sort of a futuristic take on DDD. Hopefully you guys will enjoy. Uh, also, of course, a reminder, uh, if you guys want to pick up this playmat that I'm using or the sleeves that I'm using uh, or amazing deck box, uh, Imperium Duelist is one of the lovely sponsors of this channel, and they have been for quite some time. So if you want to help support me and the channel and get some amazing TCG accessories uh, at a discount, feel free to check them out down in the description below and use that discount code WINNERKILLS10 off to save 10% off your entire order. And if you're buying anything off of TCG Player, don't forget to use my affiliate link down in the chan uh, down in the description below as well, because that helps support the channel uh, as well, just by shopping on TCG Player at no cost to you. So well, let's go ahead and get into, of course, the deck profile, and then we'll talk about card rolls and things like that. So uh, to start off for the deck profile here, we just have three copies of the Swirl Slime, three copies of the Necro Slime, three copies of DD Lamia, three copies of DD Savant Kepler, uh, three copies of DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok, two copies of DDD uh, DD Savant Ca Copernicus, two copies of DD Ghost, one DDD Chaos King Apocalypse, this card is great with Needle Fiber, not Needle Fiber, uh, Gilgamesh rather, and one DD Savant Thomas, that's it for the monsters, the spells, we have three Allure of Darkness, we have three Dark Contract with the Gate, three Call by the Grave, uh, to make sure our plays go through, two copies of Where Art Thou, two copies of Pot of Desires, one Into the Void, one Upstar Goblin, one Foolish Burial, one One for One, one Monster Reborn, and one Dark Contract with the Swamp King. That rounds out the 40 card extra deck. Shoutouts to the Primal Bean. Moving on to the extra deck, we have one Cloth Heap, one Needle Fiber, and one DDD Abyss King Gilgamesh. Hopefully it will release in the Dual Overload set. This is coming out in Ignition Assault, and this is coming out in the Dual Overload set as well. Uh, DDD Flame High King Genghis, and then two copies of DDD Flame Genghis. No DR in this profile. Number 38, Hope Harbinger Dragon Titanic Galaxy. One DDD Wave High King Caesar. One Borload Savage Dragon. One DDD Curse King Siegfried. One Crystal Wing uh, Synchro Dragon. Uh, one DDD Gus King Alexander. One Odd Eyes Meteor Burst Dragon. One Shooting Riser Dragon. And lastly, one Formula Synchron. Uh, of course, for some needle fiber targets. So that is it for the quick rundown of the deck profile in just under two minutes. Now we're going to go ahead and take a look at the card rolls within the deck. All right, so we'll get started with the starter cards, of course, the cards that help get our engine going, the cards that have often the easiest activation requirements, uh, and things like that help us see more cards, uh, things like that. And you've heard me uh, explain several times what starters are, uh, at least the what I define them to be. Uh, so here... Pretty simple set of starters, which I think which makes this deck like a lot more consistent, um, especially with the three alert of darkness. Obviously, looking at Swirl Slime first, uh, one of the, the key foundations of this deck uh, is the fusion summoning mechanic. Most, if not all of your plays will be started with a fusion summon play, and of course, Swirl Slime will allow you to do that. The only thing you need alongside him is any other DD or DDD monster uh, to be able to use him to pitch him to the grave alongside anything else, sort of bypassing polymerization. He sort of is a built-in polymerization just for DDDs. Uh, so this card is absolutely fantastic. A must have at three, hands down. Next, we have the DD Savant Kepler. This guy, upon normal or special summon, can either bounce the DD card you control back to the hand or add a dark contract from your deck to your hand. So you can either search out this searcher card right here 
or can search out the other fusion spell within the main deck the dark contract with the swamp king in order to be able to uh, extend your plays further if you need more ways to fusion if you don't happen to see a card like swirl slime in your opening hand um so yeah this card is basically searching out your searcher which searches you more cards uh, and then again uh just more consistency of course by playing the three copies uh, i want to see it as fast as possible and then so yeah of course three kepler in this deck hands down and then of course the three dark contract with the gate uh, this card allows you to search any uh, DD monster from your deck once it is activated, uh, once you use the effect of it, rather not activating the actual spell itself. Um, it allows you to search uh, literally anything in your deck, and it is you can, since it's a continuous, you can use that every turn. You do take that thousand burn damage, but that's just been a part of DDD since its inception. No way around that is one of the drawbacks, but it isn't too big of a drawback nonetheless. Um, so yeah, this card, no brainer, searches out all of your starter cards, can search you out the Swirl Slime, can search you out Lamia, can search you out extenders like uh, Ragnarok, uh, or the Necro Slime, or Lamia, or Ghost, whatever you need, this card can get you to it, uh, help to get your combos going. Allure of Darkness, all the, the monsters in the main deck are dark, Allure is not a once per turn, um, if Into the Void was still at 3, I would consider that a starter 100%. Um, you could definitely consider Into the Void a starter card. Um, it is basically like an upstart goblin, uh, but sort of, it's just generic draw power. It does not once per turn, uh, so it would be a better example if it were still at three. Um, but of course, the reason I'm putting Allure in here over Desires, of course, Desires could still be con uh, considered a starter card um, if need be, since it is draw power, it is allowing you to see more cards, more potential combo pieces. Uh, Allure is just slightly better in the fact that it is not a once per turn, so you can cycle through multiple of these in a turn uh, to try to fix your hand to be able to play uh, Yu-Gi-Oh, essentially. So 3 Allure, I think, is imperative for this deck. And then, of course, last but not least, one copy of 1 for 1. This card essentially is your fourth copy of your Kepler, also your fourth copy of your Lamia, fourth copy of your Necro Slime. Uh, so this can help to start off plays by getting access to Kepler or can help extend plays if need be to get cards like Lamia on the board. So yeah, uh, these are the starter cards I have laid out here. 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, um, which anywhere from 11 to 14 roughly uh, starter cards is how much you want to be able to have a good balance of power and both consistency within the main deck. So uh, I think these all check out rather well for starters uh, in the deck and uh, definitely have been uh, at least the, the gold standard for starter cards within this deck for quite some time. Uh, so yeah, that's it for that. We'll take a look at the superior extenders now. Okay, so here we have our superior extenders. And of course, the role of the superior extenders are to, of course, uh, extend upon the plays that we do with our starter cards. They make them more powerful. Um, and these cards are easier to meet the activation requirements for not easy um not easier than the starter cards of course otherwise these uh could be considered starters um but yeah and also just based on sort of the order of operations uh, and things like that but these are the cards that i would genuinely uh generally classify as superior extenders for this deck um of course you have the ddd oblivion uh king abyss ragnarok this card uh basically a monster reborn while in the scale but uh you do need to summon first a DDD mon a DD monster, of course, um, and then have a viable target in the graveyard uh, to be able to have to revive. And it does cost a thousand life points as well. It makes you deal half battle damage. And his other effect, one special summon from hand, is he can summon any DDD uh, from the graveyard. It has to be a triple D. Um, so yeah, this card is basically a monster born while in the scale, um, but it does require a bit of setup. It does require you already have a fusion play set up, you know, through your swirl slime. Uh, you know, through a contract player, a Kepler, whatever it may be. So this card, not 100% readily available to use as a Monster Reborn, does require some setup first uh, to be able to make it live. Five scale, um, the scale aspect of it really isn't too relevant in DDD, just using him as an extender in the scale, rather sort of as like a continuous spell. Uh, then of course, Necro Slime, hands down, 100% uh, like the perfect definition of a superior extender. Obviously, Swirl Slime, gets all of your plays started uh pretty much 99 percent of all ddd plays maybe 90 percent if you want to count kepler as starting most of them um, but swirl slime is a pretty much prerequisite to be even able to play Yu Gi Oh with this deck 
but necro slime allows you to extend obviously a bit further through fusion summoning through the graveyard because much like uh, swirl slime allows you to fuse from hand by discarding necro slime allows you to fuse from grave by banishing itself alongside any other dd card uh, to be able to fusion summon a dd monster from your extra deck so this card is really great for that of course uh then we have copernicus this is a card i decided i'd bump down to two um because i didn't want to play too many normal summons because obviously you have kepler as a dedicated normal summon and then copernicus of course acts as a foolish burial upon normal summon as well to be able to send any dd or dark contract uh, so i didn't want to like fill this deck up with too many normal summons and uh, this card, of course, is uh, able to be summoned off of Swirl Slime's graveyard effect to be able to banish itself to summon from hand. Uh, so Swirl can both act as a starter and an extender in that aspect. That's why that card is so great uh, in this deck and has to be played at three hands down. Uh, because he can get other like extenders out of your hand, essentially, to be able to use and activate their effects. You can get Copernicus to be able to dump a card like Lamia or Necro Slime if you don't already have it. And you can also be able to use... Uh, to dump the uh, Oblivion King Ragnarok uh, to the to the graveyard to be able to follow up uh, with a revival play off of your Genghis um, or Swirl Slime can bring him out to bring back out any extra deck monster in the grave um, that you need to you know use to sort of do the chain of combos uh, that this deck is capable of doing. So hands down, uh, these guys these guys are great for uh, extending our plays in every aspect. Now desires. Um, of course, I'm playing a lot of three ofs in this deck. This card could be considered a starter card, hands down, but it could also be considered a superior or additional extender because there are some really important cards in this deck, uh, very, very important to this deck's game plan, of course, that one being Swirl Slime, another being Lamia, because not only do you need a fusion to resolve most plays in this deck, but you are going to need a tuner, uh, almost just as important to have a tuner in this deck because you will need to perform a lot of synchro plays alongside your fusion plays to be able to have a remotely productive turn uh, and if desires ends up clearing away out of the, those cards out of your deck then you're kind of out of luck um before the ban list these two desires would have just been two other copies of into the void um so this could have been pr like primarily more starters for the deck um which it has been proven to be of course the ban list said otherwise um but this will require you obviously some cases Play your uh, cards like your contracts first. Resolve your Copernicuses, your Foolish Burials first uh, before you use the Desire. So often cases, this card uh, in this deck, while it does have an extremely easy activation requirement of just banishing 10, uh, with this deck specifically, it will require you to do a little more work first just to ensure you don't entirely banish a lot of your key combo pieces from the main deck. Of course, sometimes you will have no other choice than to start your turn with this card um, because it can fix hands and that is what its job is basically to do is to fix hands or to see more combo pieces to work with so uh, this card could be either or superior or starter however you want to look at it and then next up here we have where art thou which has been sort of a very interesting stable card that has been played in this deck uh, for quite some time basically if you control a level one monster you can add another level one monster from your deck to your hand and during that end phase you take 2000 burn damage so uh, a small price to pay uh, really to be able to search out cards like necro slime or lamia uh, or kepler rather if you happen to have to normal summon this and then make a fusion play and then use swirl to be able to bring out the kepler from hand to be able to add a contract to be able to search out more pieces etc etc um, so where are without adding consistency allowing you to grab extenders uh, but will require two of you already have used your normal summon and have done some plays at that point as well so um, this card, a bit of a harder activation requirement. You do need, of course, a level 1 on the board, but that will mostly, have, uh, in most cases, have consumed your normal summon. In some cases, maybe not, because you could, perhaps, if you open Necro and Swirl and Lamia, you can fuse using uh, the Swirl and the Necro Slime, summon out Genghis, and then use Swirl to bring out the Lamia, and then make your wear off thou live. Grab a Kepler, normal the Kepler, search your contract, search more extenders, things like that. So this card could serve multiple roles, uh, you know, depending... And obviously, things that serve multiple roles uh, are great. Uh, that just means you have more versatile cards. The deck overall is more versatile uh, and can be more consistent in some cases. Uh, so next up, we have Foolish Burial. Uh, no brainer. Uh, this card, although I would not consider a starter in this deck for good reason, and we don't really have any specific cards that really do anything for us immediately when they hit the grave. Um, obviously, you take a look at a card like Necro Slime. This will require a, another DD card to already be in the grave to be able to fusion with. Uh, you could say you could dump Swirl Slime, and then Swirl Slime is summoning out a card from your hand. 
a card like Kepler, but then again, why aren't you just normal summoning the Kepler? So um, this card, I guess you could consider either a starter or a superior extender. I think it fits slightly better as a superior extender for this deck. Uh, and superior extenders usually want anywhere from around, I think, 12 to 16 of those. Uh, obviously, depending on the deck, um, you'll vary in those numbers. Uh, Into the Void, of course, uh, basically an upstart goblin. This card, you could consider a starter card as well. Uh, just play it, draw a card. You have to ditch your whole hand at the end phase, so just kind of force you to combo, uh, you know, full on. Uh, it can be bad to see in certain points. Obviously, top decking this card isn't great, but uh, I'll basically play it as a pseudo upstart goblin. Some people may disagree, but I think this card is fantastic. And then, of course, Monster Reborn. Uh, talk about superior extenders for this deck. This deck thrives off of chaining special summons. And what other card better to play than a card that literally gives you a free special summon to do so to fuel your cards like Genghis uh, and things like that and your uh, Gale Alexander. So this is it for the superior extenders. We will now go ahead and take a look at the additional extenders, which are the, basically the same idea as the superior extenders. Uh, they allow us to obviously extend our plays to make them more powerful, more impactful overall. But they even have like even greater activation requirements. They are less consistent, but they add to the overall power ceiling of what our deck is capable to do, uh, is capable of doing rather. Um, so we do want that balance of, of power and consistency. Although we should slightly value power more a bit than consistency, uh, because the more powerful deck that we have, the more likely we are to win. So yeah, it's pretty clean, cut and dry here for the additional extenders. We have uh, DD Lamia, DD Ghost, the Chaos King Apocalypse. We have the DD Savant Thomas and one Dark Contract with the Swamp King. So starting off with the Lamia, of course, this card can special summon itself from the hand or graveyard by sending any DD or Dark Contract from your hand or face-up field to the graveyard. Um, but it gets banished once it leaves the field. So basically, one of the main ideas with this deck is to sort of do a little hot potato with this deck. You want to get this card out on the field as many times as possible without actually resolving its effect because resolving its effect is a bit, uh, you know, considered like more of a negative, if anything, as opposed to like doing any actual like extension. Obviously, it does help to extend, but we want to try to use this card, its actual effect, as little as possible. And oftentimes, it will be the last... Uh, the last thing we actually do in a combo sequence is use Lamia's actual effect. Although it is sort of extremely important to be able to play this card because, like I said, not only do we need to 100% rely on fusion summoning this deck, uh, the next best thing, of course, is being able to perform a synchro summon, and Lamia being a tuner allows us to do that. Um, but I would not consider this a superior extender uh, because we're never really using its own effect uh, to make itself live. Uh, we do very rarely. Uh, and at the oftentimes the end of a combo sequence, but uh, this card I would definitely consider additional extender, all things considered. Uh, next up we have DD Ghost. This card really doesn't do much uh, other than just act as a needle fiber target, and once it hits the graveyard, it allows us to send more cards to be able to use as fusion fodder for the Necro Slime, and that's really all it does, because once it hits the graveyard, you can target a DD, or mon a DD Monster or Dark Contract in your graveyard except itself, and send one card from your deck to the graveyard with that same name. And then if it's banished, uh, you can target one of your banished DD monsters or dark contract cards, except itself, and return it to the graveyard. So it also helps to recycle resources that we've banished. And we do banish a lot with this deck. We banish with this card. Uh, Lamia can get banished. Necro Slime banishes itself. And so does Swirl Slime. Uh, so we do do a lot of banishing. The same thing, Contract uh, can banish a lot of cards as well. So this sort of helps with our resource game, our grind game. Very, very important doesn't do much though on its own that's why i would consider it a additional extender then we have the chaos king apocalypse uh this card is absolutely fantastic because of gilgamesh um it isn't the greatest on its own but with gilgamesh we can basically tutor this to the scale uh instantly and be able to summon out as an extender and at level seven with of course the level one tuner that lamia is this can allow us to make Siegfried very, very, very easily. Its other effect can come up pretty handy as well if you're not trying to burn yourself to death with contracts. Uh, so that can be pretty handy. But being able just to banish two DD monsters from your graveyard to summon it from the Pendulum Zone to be able to trigger cards like Ragnarok, Genghis, Alexander, whatever it may be, uh, it is absolutely clutch for that. And it does require a bit of setup. It does have to be played in the scale. You do have to have two cards you're willing to banish that aren't already being sort of designated to be used as fusion fodder. Um, and then we have the DD Savant Thomas, uh, an OG for this deck, if you will. It is a great level 8 target. Uh, it can recycle things back from your face-up extra deck to your hand if need be. But it also has a better effect, and it's its monster effect, 
where you can target a DD card in your Pendulum Zone, destroy it, and if you do special one level a DD monster from your deck in defense position. So basically, if you have to make a, a rank eight play with this deck, uh, and you have Ragnarok in the grave, or in your scale rather, uh, and you have like Swirl Slime, you can summon this out from your hand, and then use uh, this effect to destroy the Ragnarok to summon out another Ragnarok from the deck be able to make a rank eight with whether it be Kali Yuga or number 38 Hope Harbinger um, just allows for a lot of utility but it is a hard card to set up because a lot of times you aren't going to be using that effect uh, when it's on board because it really just doesn't fit into most combos it just sort of if you open this card it gives you that option um, but a lot of the times if we're playing just one you're not going to see this as much because it isn't the greatest card but still I think kind of necessary just to play as a one of and then last but not least, of course, the Dark Contract with the Swamp King. Um, basically a polymerization or a miracle fusion for the deck. It is searchable off of the Kepler. Uh, it does allow us to take a thousand damage during our standby phase, which is fine. That is just, uh, you know, a given at this point with a lot of DDD cards. Um, but yeah, allows us to get more extension uh, through fusion. And um, a lot of the times you won't really go for this card if you are using your Kepler to grab Contract. Because you should always kind of prioritize Contract. Uh, over uh, Swamp King um, just because that'll allow you to get more extenders and you're getting Necro Slime, which Necro Slime basically does what this card does. But sometimes you won't have access to Necro Slime and this card will be your saving grace. So that is it for the superior extenders. Uh, now we're just going to take a look at defensive cards, uh, cards that allow us to re raise our ceiling um, based on like things that are placed upon us by our opponent. And one card that comes to mind that does that is called by the Grave. Of course, allowing our uh, plays to go through. If they have an Ash for our Copernicus, it is imperative that we have a call by the Grave for it because sometimes that can just outright end a play right then and there. So this card is absolutely amazing. It can also act as a bit of a floodgate uh, as well, being able to shut off key cards our opponent is trying to use in their graveyard. Um, in defensive cards, we really don't want to play too many of these in the main deck. I think anywhere from like 3 to 6 is a good number to play. Um, so three right there is perfectly fine. And then last but not least, the upstart goblin, uh, really serves no purpose other than to lower the deck count below 40. Uh, and that's really what it does, uh, well. Do a quick rundown of the extra deck here as well. All right. So here is the extra deck broken down into synchros, Xyz, links, and fusions. Um, like I said, the most important thing about this deck is the fusion, uh, aspect of it because that allows us to get most of our plays going uh, and these fusion cards uh, have a lot of extension power now why are we only playing three because that's really all we need to play there are other great dd fusions but there really just isn't room after all to play them so one of the most common things about ddd is it uses uh special summons of certain types uh, to be able to trigger other monsters effects to be able to special summon out other things for example, DDD Flame King Genghis basically says if another DD or uh, DD or DD basically says if another DD monster or monsters is special summon to his uh, this basically says if another DD monster or monster is special summoned to your field while you control this phase up card except during the damage set, you can target one DD monster in your graveyard and special summon it. So um, basically, this card just allows you to chain special summon. So once you fusion out for this using your Swirl Slime, and then you use Swirl Slime's graveyard effect to summon, per se, a Copernicus from your hand, uh, then you can use the effect of Genghis to bring out another card from your grave. And at that point, you could use those two extra monsters to go into Gilgamesh, um, or whatever, really. Or you could use them to go into Needle Fiber if one of those cards was a Lamia that you're bringing out. And there's a lot of things uh, that you can do. Uh, so these guys primarily acting as extenders, and same thing with the... Uh, a high flame king Genghis, uh, basically saying if another DD monster is normal or special summon, so a bit more lenient on the activation requirements for this card. Also, it can offer interruptions uh, for spells and traps, um, but that is only during your turn. So really not using this guy uh, to create our end board with, um, I guess if we're using him as an interruption. A lot of times he can just be used uh, turn one to act as an extender to get more bodies on the field and also be able to use to uh, make a rank eight with uh, for the Hope Harbinger. Uh, Gilgamesh is great. Um, not, he does lock us into DDDs only once we use his scale placement effect. Um, but that scale placement effect is extremely clutch. Uh, it does allow us to tutor out Ragnarok and Chaos King Apocalypse immediately. Of course, Cloth Heap is a no-brainer uh, when a fusion monster is summoned. 
uh, to his own that it points so you can summon out a level four lower monster so copernicus comes to mind uses a fact to send something to the graveyard for more extension lamia also comes to mind to use a synchro fodder uh wave high king caesar this card is absolutely insane it does take two level sixes that's why we're playing the two uh ganguses in the extra deck uh, because oftentimes we'd be using both of those to make this guy it does offer a lot of interruption and a lot of decks have a hard time dealing with this card number 38 of course more interruption because that's what this deck tries to do it tries to combo 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 and then sort of build a board using cards like number 38 high caesar boral savage uh siegfried and uh crystal wing everything else is pretty much just a means to an end same thing with gal alexander a, a dd monster is normal special summon while he's in the field you can summon a level four lower dd monster from the graveyard so bringing back lamia a lot of times is what he does odd eyes meteor burst strictly for summoning out ragnarok from the pendulum zone using his effect on summon to summon a ddd from the graveyard to be able to use uh you know more uh you know resources and uh more cards to be able to make plays with uh these two cards here the shooting riser and the uh the formula of course are used for needle fiber needle fiber targets and these guys are mainly used to synchro into the boar load savage dragon uh, during your opponent's turn because a lot of the combos you will use Gilgamesh as a fact to be able to lock yourself into DDD so you won't be able to make the Boral Savage on your turn but you're going to use Needle Fiber to make it on your opponent's turn and uh, using uh, some correct comboing you'll have used Lamia to send this guy to the graveyard giving you a link to engrave to be able to equip to your Savage Dragon with um, and then of course Siegfried and Crystal Wing are mainstays in this deck they always have been um, just because they offer, uh, you know, unparalleled interruption, negation of a spell or trap, negation of a monster effect, uh, really, really just incredible. And I think I pretty much uh, covered everything in here. Now you could play if you're playing a TCG legal build. I would still play Cross Sheep since this is coming out in Ignition Assault. Uh, this is coming out in Dual Overload, but this could easily re be replaced for like a Link Karibo or an Appaloosa if you want to play that card as well. Um, also, of course, honorable mention to DDD uh, Kali Yuga. Uh, that card is fantastic. I'm not doubting that. Um, it's just I play this as a going first deck, and Hope Harbinger seems much more enticing to be able to make uh, going first than the uh, the Kaliuga. And I really just don't have room uh, for the Kaliuga uh, alongside of the number 38. And of course, you could also opt to play a card like Link Rebo as well uh, to be able to link off your Keplers with. So that is it for that. Now I'm just going to go ahead here and talk about side decking. And that's going to pretty much be it for this video. Um, so basically side decking uh, with this deck is pretty like somewhat complicated because there's a lot of really powerful combo pieces in here that a lot of the times you won't want to take out. Uh, and taking out draw power is sometimes kind of a no-no with decks like this uh, and most decks in general uh, because you're making your deck less consistent overall going into the next game, which why would you want to do that? Um, but things you can't cut out are sort of unnecessary extra extenders. Um, Into the Void is a card I would definitely side out because um, with siding in cards, maybe like Lancia or Nibir or Hand Traps and things like that, you obviously don't want this card discarding all your Hand Traps during the end phase. So Into the Void is a card that easily can come out. Uh, Called by the Grave uh, is a situational card. This card uh, can come out in certain matchups, maybe matchups where... Uh, you maybe you know your opponent really isn't playing any hand traps or maybe this card really does nothing against your opponent maybe you're playing against a deck like true draco uh, or some very heavy stun deck like sub terror where maybe this card really isn't doing you too much and maybe a set of twin twisters would do you much better so all by the grave is a card that could potentially be sided out although i wouldn't always side it out uh, maybe siding out one copy of lamia and one copy of ghost Thomas, a lot of the times I do find myself siding out because he isn't 100% necessary. I would probably always try to leave the triple alert in the main deck, if at all possible. Maybe one desires uh, where Arf Thou could also be sided out. Same thing alongside the Monster Reborn. Not really necessary, more of just uh, you know, a win more card at the end of the day and would rather be replaced with a side deck card like Twin Twister, Lancia, whatever it may be. Uh, or the Radiant Multidimensional Kaiju. That is a favorite side deck card of mine uh, because it is a dark, uh, can be used with Allure of Darkness, and does clear a lot of problems. Uh, so these are a lot of side deck cards that you could take out. Uh, maybe just one Call by the Grave, um, and you're playing just two in the main deck, or you're siding out two and just leaving one in, whatever it may be. You do have room to side in you know, three, uh, possibly to eight, nine, or ten, whatever it may be. 
uh, slots. Um, a lot of people consider, you know, maybe I just side out the upstart. But again, you're siding out consistency, uh, which I think is kind of a no-no uh, because you want your deck to be consistent. You want to be able to leave that draw power in to see your side deck cards uh, that you're putting in in the first place. So that is going to do it for this deck profile. Like I said, I'm not going to do test hands anymore in these deck profiles because um, it adds on to the overall length of the deck profile, and I make test hand videos for a reason. So if you want to see the test hands for this deck that I did, check them out up here annotated in the top right or should be annotated at the end in the last 20 seconds of the video so thank you guys so much for watching hopefully it was informative and uh yeah if you have any questions leave them down in the comment section below and uh yeah as always guys want to kill signing out we'll see you guys in the next one